I have to admit, I'm a freshman in the Leica R system. So at one time, I stumbled around a set of lenses coming with an R4 for a pretty cheap price, and I had to buy it. When I tried to mount a 135 f2.8 lens on my Leica R8, I noticed something strange. The aperture values were not transferred to the camera, or even worse, at some point the values were totally wrong. The lens itself was definitely not working with my camera. But what happened? The lens itself seemed to be alright. I tested it on a Leica R8 and the values were displayed correctly. I also tested a 50mm Summicron on the Leica R8 and here the values were correct as well. So I could conclude, camera and lens both are alright, but not in combination together. So what was the problem? For everybody who wants to skip the video, here is the short answer. Old Leica lenses don't have a certain cam that is needed to transfer the aperture information of the lens to the camera. Therefore, modern cameras don't work with old lenses. And that's it basically. For those who want to get the long answer, here it comes. I want to start with a little history lesson to explain why things happened as they did. To get a better overview, I will start to mark the important milestones of the Leica R system on a table. The Leica R mount was introduced in the year 1964 with the first Leica SLR, the Leica Flex. Leica took the step into the SLR market comparatively late maybe because of the success of the Leica M3 at this time. With the Leica Flex, the first generation of the Leica R mount was introduced. Within the mount there is a certain cam to transfer the aperture information to the camera. The cam itself is a curved bar with a defined profile. Here you can have an idea of how the cam works. When turning the aperture ring, the bar turns as well. Attached to the camera, the bar pushes a special counterpart into the camera body. The displacement then can be measured. It is very important that the displacement is very finely adjusted and makes it possible for the camera to read the aperture value precisely. In general, this is the idea of the cam technology. The information is transferred mechanically by rotating the cam and the information itself is mechanically defined by the height of the cam profile. This first generation is called single cam or also one cam. But the technological progress on the market continued and so new cameras had to be developed as well. Therefore, only four years later with the Leica Flex SL, TTL metering was introduced. Also Leica created a new lens and camera coupling mechanism, located on the other side of the lens barrel. For reasons of compatibility with the newer lenses in the old Leica Flex camera, the first cam was also placed into the mount. Therefore we now have two cams with basically the same function, just on different locations and only one of them is working at the same time, depending on which camera you use. This is called the two cam design. As you can see in the diagram, we now have the first time that old lenses do not work properly with a newer camera anymore. The one cam lenses do not share an interface with the Leica Flex SL and later the SL2 anymore. So to meter the exposure time you have to manually stop down the lens and only then you can measure the correct exposure and take your photo. This is also called stop down metering. Later on in the SL2 the first cam was again used for another purpose. The aperture value displayed in the viewfinder was now controlled by this first cam. In 1976, eight years after the two cam lenses were introduced, Leica again changed the coupling mechanism. The Leica R3 was developed in cooperation with Minolta. And with this new camera, also a totally new method for the information exchange was created. We now have a third cam, which comes in form of a triple step design. While the old cams used to transfer the information actually by the height of the cam at a certain aperture value, the new step design speaks radially. This means now the angle of the stairs is the parameter the camera reads out. The cam is placed at the position of the second cam 
but aligned a little more to the center of the mount. These lenses with three cams can for sure be used on all Leica Flex and Leica R cameras and support the open aperture metering and control. If you plan to use your lenses on both of these camera generations, then go for a three cam lens design. And this design was then used for over 20 years, up to 1969. But before, in 1986, Leica started to reduce the complexity of the lenses and made a new variant that only had the third stepped cam. Here I have an example of a 28mm Sigma lens that was adapted with the Leica R cam only. Of course, the compatibility of the Leica Flex and SL SL2 cameras was not given anymore. Still, they work perfectly fine with all Leica R cameras. ROM lenses are the last generation of communication devices and were introduced with the Leica R8 in 1969. They feature electronical communication between the camera and the module. ROM is the short form of read-only memory and stands for a little chip that stores lens individual information and communicates the actual aperture value. In combination with digital modules, the camera could internally correct the lens vignetting or use the focal distance to adjust a mounted flash. At the position of the first or single cam, the ROM contacts are now placed. Leica recommends not to attach lenses with a 1 or 2 cam design to an R8 or R9 camera. It could be possible that old lenses with heavy usage are slightly misaligned and then can damage these ROM contacts. ROM lenses come also with the R cam attachment and therefore are compatible with all older Leica R cameras from the R3 to the R9. Because of the missing first and second cam, they do not work on the older models. As you have seen, it is not that simple just to buy a Leica R lens for a Leica SLR camera. You have to be aware of the different types of cams on the lens and if it fits to your camera or not. The full table now contains 4 camera and 5 cam generations and all of them call themselves R mount. The number of possible combinations is large. But not all of them work together and some could even damage your camera. Here are four simple principles to summarize these boundaries. First, the Leica R3 to R9 cameras need the third cam or R cam with a stepped design. Second, this is the same for ROM lenses, but they are pretty rare and very expensive, so don't bother so much about them. Third, the first Leica Flex camera needs the first cam of the 1, 2 or 3 cam lenses and don't work with the ROM lenses anyway. Fourth, the SL and SL2 cameras need the second or third cam lenses and don't work with the 1 cam or ROM lenses. In my case, with the Leica R8 and the 135mm lens, the lens itself was a 2 cam design. As I know now with this table, the R cam was missing and I'm lucky that my camera wasn't damaged when I attached the lens. I hope you have learned something about the Leica R system by now and that you have enjoyed this video. If yes, feel free to leave a comment and a like, it would be very appreciated. So far, have a good time, bye.